fellow at the University of Queensland. I've just had a quick look at Catherine's uh, LinkedIn profile. And uh, you did a year out in, I think it was Western Australia, uh, as in the yeah. Department of Planning, which is fascinating. And Catherine is a senior principal analyst and change manager from Codec, uh, with over 10 years experience in delivering digital transformation projects. So welcome, Catherine. You've got an, exp an extensive background in change management. I see that you have You've worked that through in terms of Gas Networks Ireland, uh, uh, Valreda, and uh, and now Kodak. So really fascinating to hear what you've got to to talk to us about. You've got uh, mm -hmm. um, specific interest in looking at innovation solutions to help people on their digital journey, which I think fits in really nicely with what uh, Anne Marie was talking about. And uh, Catherine's presentation will be on the importance of change management in digital transformation. So take it away, Catherine. Thanks, Bill. And thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, yeah, as Bill mentioned, my name is Catherine Moore. I'm a business analyst and change manager in Codec Ireland. Um, started off in the government space, and um, it's really been throughout my career as a business analyst that I have become invested in, in people, their processes, and, and really enabling them to get the best out of the technology that we've developed. So today I'll be talking through about the importance of change management. It's been great to hear some conversation already about people within the digital space. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that and into the what, the why, and the how of change management. Uh, and as always, feel free to add some questions and comments to the chat that we can discuss after. So let's look at change as, as a concept. You know, we, we talk about digital workplace, strategic development, innovation, a lot of keywords that, that, that come up around the digital transformation conversation. And, and obviously they're vital to that conversation. They're really important items, but, but sometimes there is that common thread that, that almost gets kind of pushed aside or, or left out a little bit when we do talk about digital transformation. And, um, and that's really around people. Um, so, so to me, you know, we, we often talk about iconic duos. Um, I'm, I'm sure we all have our favorites. Uh, you know, we Sherlock Holmes, Doctor Watson, Batman and Robin, and, and Morecambe and Wise, and, and and these iconic duos, whose value is, is greater than the sum of their individual parts. And um, and I suppose I put simply, you know, one doesn't work without the other. And, and that's really what I think of when I think about digital transformation. We're not just looking at platforms, systems, softwares, devices. We're referring to the people who use these technologies and uh, and how they can be more effective and productive when they when they use these technologies. So so we've really placed this icon here, not so much around the collaboration, which is obviously a, a really important part of digital transformation, but actually more to denote that talent and technology go go hand in hand. And, and to really try and put that concept in the forefront of our mind and in, in the forefront around the discussion of digital transformation. So, so when we do that, that, that's really what we're talking about. When um, that the, the talent and technology, that's really where change management comes into us. So, so what is change management? Uh, Prosci, which is a global leader in the change management methodology, uh, ADCAR, which actually we'll, we'll look a little bit at later, defines change management as a discipline that guides how we prepare, equip and support individuals to successfully adopt change in order to drive organisational success and outcomes. Um, it's a really long winded way of saying, you know, we bring individuals along on the journey and that helps us get better outcomes. It helps us drive more success, sets us up for more success. And, um, and sometimes when we think about this, th there's a tendency to say, okay, that, that, you know, success sounds great, but, um, you know, it's a bit like fairy dust, but, but actually change management is a lot more tangible than you think. So a McKinsey study here, and I think we, we had a kind of reference to, to studies like this in, in the previous slide deck. So McKinsey study in America showed that return on investment was actually 143% when a change management program was part of the initiative. So a really tangible piece of evidence to show that where we implement change management, we are, are actually seeing a return on that investment. So, so what does this mean? It means for every dollar spent on the project, 
the business was actually making 43 cents. So now that we know that it's successful and now that we know that we can put uh, some tangible evidence around that, um, let's look at kind of how we can draw down on that investment. And really we wanna start with the, the first things first, you know, here we want to address worries and eliminate fears. And, and Barry spoke in, our, in the, the earlier session around COVID, that impact on digital. And, and actually, if we think about the, the COVID impact on even ourselves as, as you know, just people watching the news, it taught us that we really don't like surprises um, and we're definitely mo most comfortable where we can try to predict the future um, and, and try to, to have some certainty around our own future. And, and that's really, Kind of where change management is as well um we try and put the the if we kind of refer to this graph here we put individuals in this blue zone which is our comfort and secure zone um it's you know people often start off in this place when we kick off a, a, a digital initiative um you know at the project initiation stage and and when they kind of set out on that journey that you know they're comfortable with what they've heard they're comfortable about what's about to happen but it's if we allow the communication to slip we then kind of draw them into the worry and the uncertainty realm and, and kind of into that orange and red zone and, and at the red zone is really where our resistance and fear peaks so if we don't maintain the communication we bring them into this this red zone which is actually aptly named the the woe zone so um this is where we start to lose buy-in, interest, uh, and more importantly, confidence in, in what the project is trying to deliver. It's here that we tend to hear about you know, the bad news stories, um, the project timeline is slipping, resources cannot be allocated, um, in general, the bad news. Um, and it's not usually because the project is failing, it's actually because the change has not been managed appropriately. So how can we manage that change? If we think of change at the organizational level, there's three items that we can really do in order to, to ensure that we see the benefits of our investment in change and, uh, and our allocation to change. So first things first, we want to prepare their approach. Very similar to how we prepare the approach for requirements gathering or you know, deployment. Um, we want to prepare how we are communicating with, with each of our business units. And remember that development is only useful if it's being used. So, so kind of making that a, a, a kind of forefront of our approach. We want to manage the change. This is really kind of talking about management from a top level down. You know, it's really vital for people that are in the coal face of the change that they see their management um, and their uh, superiors really talking about that change as a benefit to them. We also want to make sure that we align to the business needs. Uh, we want to capture the individual's pain points, their objectives. Um, a key thing here sometimes is the competing values framework or, or survey um, to really identify what individuals are looking for out of the project. Um, and then we'll see the benefits. We'll see them getting more engaged in, in the organizational change. And then if we bring that down to an individual level, you know, aligning to them is, is about personalizing the experience. Um, what do you want to see out of this project? Inevitably, if you ask for feedback, you empower that person to take responsibility for maybe making it happen or, or maybe making, you know, talking to other people about uh, the success of the project. And again, it's about building up that good news um, to ensure that we're keeping people in that comfort secure zone. And again, that kind of brings us into the third item there, which is around removing fear. Um, I think Gar mentioned earlier, uh, fear was, you know, it has a huge impact to, to the mind and it absolutely does. Um, and it's, it's one of those things that as long as we keep people in the know, um, give them the knowledge that we, we, we kind of enable, enable them to be, to be in that comfort zone. So that's where they are going to be able to make the real change and be part of that initiative with you and and you'll get a, a little bit more buy-in and um and hopefully some better results yeah fear is the mind killer is, is what gar said so so like that okay we, we've talked a little bit how we do it and, and talk had a, a quote earlier around you know what we're going to get down what we're going to draw down from it 
And here's another quote. Again, this is from a separate, um, an actual, a, a separate result or report. And, and this is where PROSI actually identified that initiatives with excellent change management are six times more likely to meet objectives than those with poor change management. You know, that, that's a huge huge win um you know when in in the age where where sometimes the the projects do fail and a lot of the initiatives fall down um this is a massive thing to to kind of bring into the project so six times more likely to meet objectives but also you're actually five times more likely to stay ahead of schedule um and you're twice as likely to stay on uh budget so a huge big win there in terms of having the excellent change management um initiative however it does say that if it, it has to be excellent so what if it's not excellent um you know if i if i do something but not quite excellent can i get what do i get out of it and actually you know we still get a huge return, even if we have a fair change management. So this graph here shows you that you don't have to do it perfectly. Um, but as long as you do something, you're going to get a huge amount of return on it. So if you do an excellent change management program, you're six times more likely to, to meet those objectives. But if you do a fair, um, a poor to fair change management program, you're still three times more likely to, to meet your objectives. So again, even if you don't do it, a, a, you know, a fantastic change management program, just by doing something, you can, um, you can see the return. But what if I, what if I don't do anything? Um, so these are the risks associated with not having a, a change management initiative as part of your, your digital initiative, um, project delays, um, you know, one of the major issues with many of the kind of software implementations, this doesn't always just impact budget, but it also impacts resourcing. And if the right people aren't involved, you kind of move into our second risk, missed milestones. You know, having the right people involved means that you can see the some of the obstacles that might come down your way. So if we miss them, it leads to frustration, a lot of rework, and again, slippage on the timescales. We also risk the, uh, run the risk of resistance. Going back to our earlier graph in terms of where fear and confusion is building, that's where we bring the people into that red zone. So risk resistance start to build, build at that point as well. And then of course, project fails to deliver results. And it's not that just this project that is impacted by the, the failure to deliver results. A history of that has a huge impact in the confidence in your next initiative and the initiative after that. So it's not just this project that's going to really kind of um, be impacted. So that's something to bear in mind in terms of, you know, kind of saying, I don't want to do anything with, with change. So hopefully you, you've, you're thinking that, that you would like to do something with change um, and you want to know where to start. And I mentioned earlier about Prosci and their change methodology. And, and they they look at an ad car methodology and ad car stands for awareness desire knowledge ability and reinforcement and again i've kind of put in some elements here which are, are tangible exercises that you can you know take away from from this this um slide deck and say okay this is something that i can do i can start off with so building awareness this is really about getting a communication plan in place um, it's where your communication plan might be built around a particular business unit and draw on their actual pain points. So keep them informed, keep them as part of the progress, give them the good news stories about how the digital transformation project is going. Um, all staff emails, a survey, you know, get them involved, empower them to make those decisions and give them responsibility back. Desires, um, town hall, change champions. A town hall is great for for building the the you know the top down approach um, making sure that management are, are behind the change as well knowledge i can't stress this enough you know to prioritize training make sure that people know what what they need to do you know again lack of knowledge causes confusion makes people fearful and resistant ability once they have the knowledge and the awareness, let's check in with them to make sure that they're actually 
using that. Um, so check-in clinics always work really well here in terms of um, making sure that they're using the system, that they're using it well, is there tips and tricks that we can provide for them. And that kind of leads us into the reinforcement area, which is adoption monitoring. You know, and again, our, my the, the kind of line earlier, the the system is only useful if it's being used. So let's make that part of our success program in terms of getting people onto the system, that they're using it, that they find that it's useful for their daily activity. So where do we put it? Uh, an item that you'll all be, uh, you know, be familiar with here is the project life cycle. And I've identified some of the, the key items here for the SDLC. And this doesn't have to change. You know, um, one of the kind of key things here is, is it all sounds quite heavy um, and it, it maybe it sounds like it's it's quite overwhelming when when we think about projects and the digital initiative. And but really change management is just layering what you already do onto that project life cycle, but just putting a little bit more structure around it. So nothing's going to change here. None of your timelines are going to slip. You're basically just adding in the change management slide, the change management realm. Um, I'm, it's probably a little bit small there, but the, the items in green are the key items that we've seen from before. So maybe you want to implement a survey at the very start, check in with what the users need. Um, you want to identify progress updates. Maybe that happens at the end of the analysis phase or the beginning of the design phase, letting people know where you are in that digital transformation, keeping them informed, making sure that that good news story gets out. And also that adoption monitoring when we go to the when we go to the test or we go to the training stage. So again, keeping them informed, making sure that they're using the system. So so really here it's it's about leveraging what you already have, putting the structure on top. Change management doesn't have to have a huge impact on your resources or your budget. Um, it's really about kind of just layering it on top of the project cycle that you're already running with. So takeaways here, um, what, you know, to, if we walk away from, from today, what would I like you to, to think about um, is, I suppose it's, it's kind of a return on investment. Um, that kind of key item that we looked at earlier is um, just do something. You know, if you have an excellent initiative, you will be six times more likely. But if you have a fair initiative, you're going to be three times more likely to meet your objectives. So, so start, make a start and do something. And remember, it won't take a huge investment of resources to see the benefit of change, but you will draw down on that investment. So you're more, more likely to see something happening if you have a change initiative. Think about the iconic duo. Our new, uh, our new iconic duo, our new favorite is talent and technology. Get them working hand in hand. Prioritize people as well as the technology. Um, make a comms plan. I, I suppose, I, again, that's kind of one of the key things from the, the real tangible pieces of, of things that you can do. Make a comms plan. Keep people involved. Empower them build up the excitement, the benefits of what they're going to get out of this digital initiative. And I promise you then at the end, your adoption is always going to be better. Prioritize people, shift that mentality left, keep the business in your mind. Remember that technology is useless unless it's being used. And, and hopefully this will help your digital initiatives going forward. Um, so yeah, that's so that's the um, takeaways for change management. Hopefully this will help you in your digital initiatives going forward. Uh, and thanks again to Olus and Bill for, for having us today. Thank Catherine, you. fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. I was really taken with that bit, address worries and eliminate fears. <laughs> you know, uh, if I don't know if you've uh, been following uh, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here or whatever, but <laughs> uh, the introduction of that, whenever they walked out on the two planks, I tell you, that was about addressing fears and getting rid of worries now. <laughs> Uh, I think yeah, that that that's the opposite. It's about build, <laughs> building the fear. But um, exactly. yeah. So, yeah. So thank you very much indeed. I just remind people uh, that you can use the uh, box on the right hand side of the screen to put in some Q and A. Uh, it would be useful to to be able to uh, because we've got some really great specialists here. Uh, before we go on to uh, Stephen. And also, if you want to uh, tweet out, then uh, it's at uh, Olus Magazine 
uh, is the uh, handle for today. And the hashtag is hash digital gov IRL. Uh, get my letters in the, in the correct order there. A bit dyslexic there when I read that. Uh, so feel free to tweet and uh, and do some publicity around it as well. We're going to move now on to Stephen Carolyn. Uh, I noticed that actually when I talked to Ruth earlier on, she's come from Cork, uh, Stephen worked uh, in senior IT roles in Mayo County Council and you were involved in the bro as a broadband officer in rolling out broadband across the county. He's led a team responsible for the further development of, uh, of a whole range of things going on in uh, the what we call the, the hub program.